People in my family love to play with words. We like to talk, write, read, tell stories, play Scrabble. We love to give each other goofy names and make sly wisecracks. We make puns and rhymes. We love clever song lyrics. We are a noisy bunch when we are together. So when I decided I didn't want to be anybody's grandfather and wanted my new granddaughter to call me Spike a couple of years ago, it was only natural that everyone would call her Little Spike just for laughs and to keep my own ornery self in line. We even joked about having t-shirts made that said Big Spike and Little Spike. For Christmas a year ago, I received a beautiful little whiskey flask. Engraved on the front, it says, Grandpa Spike. My daughter and her husband got a big kick out of giving it to me. I got a big kick out of getting it. Little Spike was 14 months old that Christmas, laughing, talking a little, not crawling or walking, but scooting across the floor on her bottom. She seemed to get a kick out of it too. She even seemed to be making a concentrated effort to say my name. Of course she was trying to say grandpa, but I didn't care. And I had wonderful daydreams about her showing up year after year, following me around, asking me questions, calling me whatever she wanted to. I was really thinking about those t-shirts. I saw her again the next Thanksgiving, the first time I had seen her in nearly a year. Things had changed. For one thing, little Spike had a baby sister. The newest grandbaby's name was Alyssa, but little Spike and I have decided we'll call her Al. Well, I decided that we will call her Al, and little Spike seemed to go along. She doesn't have much to say these days, and it looks like she never will. That is the other thing that has changed. Little Spike is becoming a wordless child in a family of wordy people. A new word has appeared in our family's vocabulary. No jokes, no puns, no clever retorts or witty word plays gather around it. In the face of this word, and in the dark presence of what it means, we all find ourselves nearly speechless. It is a word we wish we never heard. The word is ret. It is a small word, and looks and sounds harmless enough but it has attached itself to little Spike like a tick, already draining her of words, already sucking her away from us. Rhett is part of the name of what is wrong with little Spike. The whole name is Rhett syndrome, and it really is not like a tick at all. A tick is something you can find and pluck off before it does your child harm. We protect our children from ticks and scissors, traffic and polio, and other harmful and painful things because we know the world is a dangerous place. But it is impossible to know just how dangerous the world is until something like Rett syndrome shows up. Rett is the thing you cannot know about, the thing you cannot see, the thing you cannot pluck off or take away or inoculate against before it is too late. By the time you know it is there, it is already too late. Then it turns out that it has been there from the beginning, hiding among her genes. Only little girls are affected by Rhett, lurking out of sight at the center of every living cell, doing the secret and undetectable things a person's body can do to destroy itself. Something happens genetically for reasons no one understands, but even if you had known it was there, even if you could understand it, there would have been nothing you could do about it. Rett syndrome is like an incomprehensibly ugly thing that arrives in the unbearably beautiful package of your own granddaughter. Imagine trying to comprehend that. My daughter says it was like someone came and kidnapped little Spike, a little bit at a time, and left a child she didn't quite recognize in her place. I have heard another mother describe it as feeling like she put her daughter to bed and the next morning another child was there in her place. Little Spike looks like the same child, but she is not. Something is amiss. Looking back, some things add up, some don't. 
She was a good baby. And as it turns out, being a good baby was the first sign that something was wrong. But how can you know a thing like that? Up to 18 months to two years old, girls with Rett syndrome develop normally. Suddenly, they begin to go backward. Little Spike never learned to crawl, and she was slow to walk. She learned to scoot on her bottom. When she did walk, it was unsteadily, and she liked to hold on to the wall. But we figured that would get better with practice. She loved books and watching Teletubbies and Veggie Tales on TV. By the time she was 18 months old, she knew lots of words. But suddenly, she seemed to know almost no words. She didn't like her books. She didn't pay any attention when her old videos were on TV. She seemed to spend more time in a world all her own. She began to cross her fingers in strange ways and touch her mouth frequently. My daughter knew something was wrong with her baby, but for a long time, no one would listen. My daughter is a wonderful, light-hearted young woman no one is in the habit of taking seriously. Her husband told her nothing was wrong. Family members told her nothing was wrong. You've just moved, they said. You've just had a new baby. Give her time. My daughter saw things getting worse. Other people saw it too, but pretended they didn't. Autism was a word we already knew. So we tried to use it to describe little Spike. My daughter said it just didn't fit. And the way she said it, let us all know we should be taking her seriously. Finally, a doctor mentioned Rett syndrome as a possibility. What? We all went online and did our research. We learned about the disturbing symptoms associated with Rett, a rare genetic disorder, the loss of language, the loss of purposeful hand use, the way the hands begin to hook toward the body, the trouble walking, the difficulty swallowing, the tooth grinding, the staying awake far into the night. In our heads, we ticked off little spike symptoms. As they added up, we found ourselves hoping for a diagnosis of autism in spite of ourselves. We had to, because we read of other ret things too. Seizures, failure to grow, malnutrition, feeding tubes, severe to profound mental retardation, scoliosis, possible institutional care, and someday far too soon, something worse. But the genetic test came back recently. It is Rett syndrome, and a word we learned only a few months ago suddenly has meaning. It is a small word, and little Spike never will be able to say it. But every time we look at her, we will hear it. Little Spike is only two years old, a sweet and beautiful child already beginning to slip wordlessly away from us, and we have not even finished saying hello. I spent lots of time with her that Thanksgiving, mostly because I love her, partly I'm sure because I hope she takes some memory of me into the faraway place every cell in her body is forcing her to go. I took her to the park, played with her around the house, fed her, decided to call her new sister Al. We had a good time. I decided that if she cannot speak, I will teach her to stomp her feet to get our attention. She liked that. We stomped around the park. We stomped around the house. We stomped across the porch. I will not stop being her grandfather, even though I never will hear her say it. So I will stomp with her as long as she can stomp. And when she can't stomp any longer, I will try to teach her some other way to speak to us. If that fails, I will simply love her and her silence. Because that is what grandfathers do, even if they do want to be called Spike. They love who is there without question and for as long as they can. Without a word, little Spike already has taught me that much.